Okay, this was the single longest experiment I had ever filmed, spanning a total of 30 days to get it all together and over 100 hours of extraction and purification. In all labs, there's this one common chemical that is annoyingly difficult to buy at a pure concentration. It's ethanol, aka ethyl alcohol. All home chemists know it's a pain to get and so the only way to obtain it, well, is to make it. Yep, that's right, in this video I'll be extracting it from sanitizer, and my main goal is to get so much anhydrous ethanol that I'll never have to worry about it again. Like I mean multiple liters. So let's get started. Okay, first things first, I had to decide on a good brand, and this was the one I chose. It's called Eco and I found it on Amazon. This one was a good choice because it has no other additives and also is in a gel consistency. I was actually able to buy a 4 liter jug as you can see here, and in the ingredients section it's actually quite simple, consisting of an amazing 80% concentration of ethyl alcohol by volume, and the remaining 20% of volume is just water, glycerin, and hydrogen peroxide. Now you might be asking, how do I even extract the ethanol from this mixture and leave behind the other three substances? A simple distillation is going to be a step in the right direction. So let's get this set up. Then, I cracked open the jug and poured about, I think, 500 mils of the sanitizer into the 1 liter round bottom flask. You don't want to fill it up too much, or usually not past half. When I felt it was all good, I dropped a stir bar into my flask and cranked up the heat to the highest setting to get the boiling started. Now with my stir plate and the massive amount of alcohol that had to reach boiling, it took forever to start but when it did, it really was a bubbly one. I also insulated it with aluminum foil to make it more efficient because I realized by then that this process is going to take a while. But wait, I can't just let this run forever. I need to closely monitor the temperature and make sure that it does not go above 90 C. When the temperature starts rising near the end, we know that most of the ethanol has been distilled over and more water begins to come over. Thus, we can stop it. In this distillation, glycerin and hydrogen peroxide boil at much higher temperatures so they will be left behind in the flask but ethanol and water will be tricky. This is because these two liquids form something called an azeotrope, which is when they act as one substance when being boiled and are inseparable by further distillation. The azeotrope boils at 78.2 degrees celsius, which is lower than both the boiling points of that of water and ethanol, and the composition of the vapor is 95% ethanol to 5% water. This means that the maximum concentration we can get via distillation is an aqueous solution of just 95% ethanol. So, how can we get rid of that last 5% of water? Well, you guessed it, a drying agent, but we'll get to that later. During the middle of the distillation, I had to come over and switch out the 250ml round bottom flask since it was completely full, and I transferred all of the 95% ethanol in this experiment into this other temporary jug. When I came back to it after another few hours, the temperature on the thermometer rose up to 90C, and at this point it should be stopped. In the receiving flask, you can see that we collected even more ethanol, like 100 mils, and I also transferred that into the ethanol jug. What I think is strange though is that ethanol doesn't actually have that strong of a smell as isopropyl alcohol, and ethyl alcohol smells rather sweet or fruity. Then, I took apart the 1 liter round bottom flask, and you can see some residual liquid left, which should be mostly water, glycerin, and hydrogen peroxide as mentioned earlier. Maybe a little bit of ethanol was left, but there's almost no alcohol smell to it. Fun, right? The first time, sure, I just gotta do this like 5 more times only to complete the first part of the 3-step purification process. Here you can see me refilling our 1 liter round bottom flask another time with more ethanol. And this time, I decided to use a 1 liter round bottom flask for the collection as well because I realized it was more convenient. Each time, I filled the round bottom flask fuller and fuller since I was becoming impatient. And like clockwork, I gotta let it distill over at a moderate rate, monitor the temperature, take it apart, transfer the distillate into the jug, dump out the remaining substances, dump in some more sanitizer, and repeat. I'll speed it up here. By the way, I didn't actually believe there was hydrogen peroxide in the sanitizer, so in the meantime, I wanted to test it out. By adding some bleach into our remaining liquid in the flask after each distillation, which should be a mixture of water, glycerin, and hydrogen peroxide, it should technically fizz and form oxygen bubbles, and as you can see here, yep, it does indeed react. I also tried to see if it can relight a glowing splint, but I guess the oxygen's not concentrated enough. You might be wondering if there were other ways to obtain ethanol. I wasn't able to find 95% ethanol around where I live and wherever I could find it online, it had like a bunch of denaturing agents in it, like methanol to stop people from drinking it. 
I decided not to go that route because methanol and ethanol have very close boiling points with a difference of just 15 degrees C, and thus are more difficult to separate, not to mention the toxicity of methanol vapors. My countless runs of distillations were played in the background, and when all four liters of my sanitizer finally ran through this simple distillation, uh, five days had already passed just doing this. I had to constantly heat it at high temps with 600 watts and boil a mixture for multiple days, sometimes even at night, which is a really bad idea because it could possibly catch fire. My parents were also asking me why the electricity bill was so high this month. I think this was the reason. Also, in hindsight, I maybe could have used a water bath, but I didn't want to bother replacing water every hour. Anyways, now that I had a huge amount of 95% aqueous ethanol, it's time to get rid of that last 5% water through a massive drying step, as I mentioned, using molecular sieves. Sneak peek, just for this single experiment, I somehow used an entire two pound package of molecular sieves. Anyways, here you can see me starting to dump in the molecular sieves into each container of 95% ethanol and using a piece of paper to guide the sieves in because they like to fly everywhere. I mean, is it just me or are molecular sieves not just the most annoying thing to work with and clean up? Like, please, someone in the comments agree with me. I'd rather work with tert butyl lithium. By the way, the 2.5 liter jug wasn't enough, so I had to use multiple containers like an Erlenmeyer flask and a round bottom flask. And they sure weren't lying when they said that the solution would get hotter. It really got quite warm after adding these in. Does anyone have an explanation for why this is? Like, does it have to do with entropy or something? It also bubbles a lot as it removes the water, so it's probably not a good idea to seal it shut during the drying phase. Now after a few hours, for me overnight actually, the solutions will stop bubbling and basically all of the water left. Now I did run into some issues with my hot plate stirrer breaking and not being able to distill it, but long story short, I got a new one a while later and let the drying phase take longer. When I could finally do the last step of purification, which is to distill our nearly pure 100% ethanol, I had to transfer all of our alcohol into an Erlenmeyer boiling flask to remove any trace amounts of impurities or sieve dust. For each batch of the 3 liters of ethanol I had to distill again, I first vacuum filtered it to remove the bulk amount of sieves and dust, and I chose vacuum because this was a huge amount and it would take forever if I did normal filtration. Now setting up a fractional distillation so that we can achieve better separation, I made a similar setup to before with again, a 1 liter round bottom flask on the other side. This time, I only started collecting when the thermometer hit around 78 then to 80 C, close to the boiling point of ethanol which is 78.4 C. A strict temperature range of only 2 degrees Celsius ensures that we collect a product of very high purity, even if it means sacrificing a bit of my yield near the end of the distillation. When the first batch was done, you could see how the original cloudy ethanol that had some sieve dust in it is now crystal clear, and each batch of our pure anhydrous ethanol was transferred into this jug. I did this about 3 more times, and sometimes I filled the flask a little too much that it bumped into the fractionating column, which is not good. Again, this took a long time in a few days, and I kept the distillation rate at around 1 or 2 drops per second, which is not super fast. I mean, it, I don't think it really matters that much, but I like to keep it at a moderate rate. When all our nearly 3 liters of ethanol was passed through a fractional distillation, I filled up the 2.5 liter jug, as well as a bit left that I stored in the jar. I was pretty proud that I was able to run such a massive operation, and I think the time and cost was quite worth it. Now it's time to just conduct an evaluation of the product. I didn't have an alcohol hydrometer, so I decided to just go with roughly calculating the density with a graduated cylinder, and you can see how it is extremely close to the theoretical density at that temperature, and it's at least 99.5% pure. After all, there is still some uncertainty in my measuring tool, so as far as I know, it may be even purer. Thus, calculating the volume I obtained, in the end it turned out to be around 2.73 liters, which is a percent yield of 91%. Not bad, but it could have been a little better if I had maybe stopped the first few distillations a little later. Indeed, for this project, I kept the distillations quite strict to ensure high purity. So there you have it, mass extracting anhydrous ethanol from sanitizer, and if you do try this out, let me know how it goes. I also want to sincerely thank my Patreon supporters for making these projects affordable, and I will provide behind the scenes ad free content, shoutouts, and more. If you would like to support a high school student like me, just $3 would go a long way in helping this channel to continue to provide quality and educational chem content. So, I want to thank you for watching till the end, and while you're at it, please consider a sub.